Hi there, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, I'm going to help you understand the quantitative risk assessment process. Now, many people approaching their cybersecurity certification exams find this topic a little intimidating because it does involve some math. But I do want to set your mind at ease. Yes, there are numbers in these questions, but the math is pretty straightforward. You just need to be able to do some simple multiplication and division, and you have a calculator to help you along the way. The real trick to quantitative risk assessment isn't actually doing the math, it's figuring out what you need to compute and what numbers to use in your computation. Now, I really encourage you to learn this process inside and out because it's a favorite topic of exam question writers. Because there are some simple formulas, it makes it really easy for question writers to come up with straightforward questions for you to answer. So let's dive in. Before we get to the math, we need to talk a little about what it means to perform a quantitative risk assessment. When we're able to gather numeric data about our assets and risks, we can use that information to make data-informed decisions about risk. This process of using numeric data to assist in risk decisions is known as quantitative risk assessment. Security professionals performing a quantitative risk assessment do so for a single risk asset pairing at a time. For example, they might conduct an assessment based upon the risk of flooding to a data center facility. As they conduct their assessment, they must determine the values for several variables. The first of these variables is the asset value, or AV. This is quite simply the estimated value in dollars of the asset. Risk assessors determining an asset's value have several options at their disposal. The original cost technique simply looks at the invoices from an asset purchase and uses those purchase prices to determine the asset value. This is the easiest technique to perform because it only requires looking at invoices. However, it's often criticized because the costs to actually replace an asset may be significantly higher or lower if asset prices have changed since purchase. The depreciated value technique is an accounting favorite. It begins with the original cost and then reduces the value of an asset over time as the asset ages. The depreciation technique uses an estimate of the asset's useful life and then gradually decreases the asset value until it reaches zero at the end of its projected lifespan. The replacement cost technique is the most popular among risk managers because it produces results that most closely approximate the actual costs that an organization will incur if a risk materializes. This approach goes out and looks at current supplier prices to determine the cost of replacing an asset in the current market and then uses that cost as the asset's value. We might use this technique to value our data center at $20 million because that's the amount of money that would be required to rebuild the data center after a disaster. The second variable we need to consider is the exposure factor, or EF. The exposure factor is based on the specific risk considered in the analysis, and it estimates the percentage of the asset that will be damaged if that risk materializes. For example, if we expect a flood might damage 50% of our data center, we'd set the exposure factor for flood to be 50%. The next variable is the single loss expectancy, or SLE. This is the actual damage that we expect to occur if a risk materializes one time. We compute the SLE by multiplying the asset value by the exposure factor. So if we have a data center valued at $20 million and expect that a flood would cause 50% damage to the facility, we compute our SLE by multiplying these two numbers together and we find that a single flood would cause $10 million in damage. That's the impact of the risk. The SLE only gives us an idea of impact, but as you know, risk assessment must also consider the likelihood of a risk occurring. Now, before I explain how to compute the likelihood, I want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new cybersecurity videos as they come out. 
Now, likelihood is where the annualized rate of occurrence, or ARO, comes into play. The ARO is the number of times each year that we expect a risk to occur. In the case of a flood, we might consult FEMA flood maps and determine that there is a 1% annual risk of flood in the vicinity of our data center. That's the same as saying that we expect 0.01 floods to occur each year, so our ARO is 0.01. Finally, our risk analysis needs to combine the impact value that we came up with earlier when we computed the single loss expectancy and the likelihood value that we documented in our annualized rate of occurrence. We do this by computing the annualized loss expectancy, or ALE. This is the amount of money that we expect to lose each year from that risk, and it's a good measure of the overall risk posed to our asset. We compute the ALE by multiplying the single loss expectancy and the annualized rate of occurrence together. In the case of flood risk to our data center, the SLE was $10 million, and the ARO was 0.01. Multiplying these together, we get an ALE of $100,000. We expect to lose $100,000 each year from the risk of flooding to our data center. It's important to remember that the cost won't occur every year. In reality, we'll have $10 million in damage each time a flood occurs. But we only expect that flood to happen once every 100 years. So the cost averages out to $100,000 per year. That's how you perform a quantitative risk analysis. You should definitely memorize those formulas and be prepared to compute the SLE and ALE on an exam. I hope this video helped you get ready to do just that. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more cybersecurity content.